now in this session uh, we are going to focus on the cetp that is common effluent treatment plant in one of the video we have already discussed about the effluent treatment plant and in other video we have discussed about the sewage treatment plant now it is a cetp that is common effluent treatment plant it means it is a different plant or different equipment rather than the etp but the principle and the mechanism of working of this cetp and etp are similar and one and the same so what exactly this cetp is so from this diagram you can understand there are different stages of this cetp and this is the combined facility because the word common means if the effluent treatment plant is not operatable or it is not feasible to operate the etp in that particular industry or in the factory itself then you can send your effluent or trade effluent to the cetp which is the common facility to treat your trade effluent or the commercial effluent in that facility that facility is called as common effluent treatment plant so this is the combined facilities for treatment of effluent and management of solid waste for clusters of small scale industries units and also to have the technical support to them because generally the small scale industries or small scale units are not having this etp facility separately and that is why this cetp can be useful for the small scale industries it helps the industries in easier control of pollution that is the waste water can be treated or this effluent can be treated with the help of these different stages of cetp this cetp acts as a step towards the cleaner environment and service to the society at large waste water of individual industries often contain significant concentration of the pollutant and to reduce them by individual treatment up to the desired concentration become techno economically difficult because when we are talking about the effluent treatment plant so obviously there are various stages like preliminary primary secondary and tertiary and all these stages if they are in operating mode the operating cost as well as the initial investment and the initial investment of all these etp are more so uh, technically also when we are running the pumps when we are running the motors when we are using the different equipments which consumes the electricity which consumes the energy so the cost of all this operating as well as for the initial investment is more as compared to the natural resources so this is the common facility so in the common facility in the common space we can use the similar or the same equipment for treating the different effluent or the different characteristics of the effluent from different small scale industries at a single place that is the main advantage of this cetp but this cetp is required uh, the permission from the state pollution control board and the central pollution control board so normally this state pollution control board is going to observe all these site layout then they are going to observe the facilities to be created at the cetp and then they are going to monitor all the activities which is going to uh, treat these effluent under this cetp plant so combined treatment provides a better and economical option because of the equalization and neutralization taking place in the cetp for the regulatory authorities also common treatment facility offers a comparatively easier means of ensuring compliance of the stipulated norms so it is easy to control the norms which is given by the spcb or cpcb and regulatory authorities are also satisfy always with these norms and with the facilities the handling and disposal of this solid waste also become increasingly easier as the infrastructure is created in the project itself 
so we can treat the solid weights also in connection with the cdp so at the same site in the same space we can treat the effluent as well as we can treat the solid waste cdp is designed on the basis of quality and flow rate of the waste water then effluent standards required by the cdp then possibility of recycle and reuse of treated waste water availability of land manpower energy and expertise in specific treatment methods willingness of the industries located so in this area in at wapi there is a cdp plant and in the thani there is a cdp plant now in the nasik cdp is sanctioned and the construction of this cdp is going on so depending on the industrial requirement depending on the load that is quantity of the waste water coming from the industries and depending on the interest of the industries they can set a cdp in a particular area so cdp is classified in two categories that is homogeneous and heterogeneous so industries producing similar goods in that industrial area are contributing the same effluent similar effluent or similar characteristics of that effluent that is why it is called as homogeneous means for example if there are 10 textile industries in a same area then these effluents consist of near about similar characteristics of that effluent so that is homogeneous if there are more than 10 paper industries in a single midc then you can say that these effluent are homogeneous and this treatment are similar nature for this homogeneous effluent if the effluent is going to produce from the different types of industries then that effluent is called as heterogeneous hetero means different so from the different industries different characteristics effluents are generated say for example if the cetp is uh, getting as a influent from the chemical industries from the dairy industry from the canneries from the pharmaceutical from the plastic from the engineering industries etc then it is a combination of different types of effluent and these different characteristics uh, effluent called it as heterogeneous effluent so for homogeneous effluent and for the heterogeneous effluent the treatment methodologies are different one what are the advantages of this ctp this is useful for the small and medium scale industries which are not going to treat or require the waste water treatment facility separately assured waste water treatment hence better control over pollution concerned pollution control agency has to monitor only one treatment plant rather than different or number of industries say for example if cetp uh, of at one place is specially designed for the 100 industries then rather than monitoring the effluent characteristics of the effluent parameters uh, for 100 industries you can easily monitor only ctp parameters and you can judge what exactly the effluent parameters are and whether all these parameters are under the permissible limits of the state pollution control board then participating industries have commitment to generate waste waters acceptable to cetp so we have already discussed that maximum permissible limits in terms of ppm in terms of mg per liter etc are given by the uh, authorities like spcb and cpcb industries are responsible for finding ways to minimize the pollution load and reduce the water consumption to the extent possible availability of the land which is difficult to be ensured by all individual units so rather than to invest for the lands for uh, all the individual units it is easy to invest for a common land or for the common facility the neutralization and equalization of heterogeneous waste makes its treatment techno economically viable and disposal of treated waste water and sludge becomes more organized so these are some of the benefits or the advantages of this cdp 
so these are some of the examples of the standards for the cetp as per the environment protection rule 1986 so some of the examples are ph temperature oil and grease phenolic compounds as c6h5oh then ammonical nitrogen cyanide chromium hexavalent that is cr plus 6 chromium total as cr then copper lead nickel zinc arsenic mercury cadmium selenium fluoride boron radioactive materials alpha emitters beta emitters etc so all these primary treatment parameters and their limits that is maximum permissible limits in terms of milligram per liter is already provided by the pollution control board with reference to the environment protection rule 1986 so we have to control all these parameter with reference to these limits or standards these are the other parameters that is in terms of concentration in mg per liter except ph and uh, temperatures so this is into land surface water and then for on land for irrigation and for into marine coastal areas so for different types of water we have to follow different types of uh, standards or the maximum permissible limits for the same parameters like ph now for ph here it is 5.5 to 9 which is similar case then bod 3 days bod procedure which is uh, which can be carried out at 27 degrees celsius uh, because it is intentionally mentioned there are different types of methods which are available to determine the bod's that is 3 days 5 days and 10 days so now the bod for uh, inland surface water uh, the limit is 30 but for on land for irrigation that is 100 and again into marine coastal areas there is a 100 mg per liter limit so the limits or the maximum permissible limits is depend on the uses and utilization of that water so these are the different parameters like dissolved solids then total residue chlorine ammonical nitrogen chemical oxygen demand that is cod mercury lead cadmium etc all these are the parameters which can be determine or identified and which should be control up to this maximum permissible limit so that is why the monitoring of this parameter from the authorities like pollution control board is an essential activity to monitor the performance of this common effluent treatment plant thank you